Lodoy Tamus, commonly called Kekek or Boo in the Dayak language, is a 74-year-old man who has been a grandfather since 2021. He now lives alone after the passing of his wife. Despite being retired as a civil servant, Bu Lodoy remains active. He manages the Pahanda Inda market in Palankarea and recently opened a cafe named Burrito Inda, located on Tamangung Tilung 4 Street, Palankarea, Central Kalimantan. Bu Lodoy lives in a modest house in the Pahandut area of Palankarea, and his children often visit him. On Thursday afternoon, June 8, 2023, one of his children, Novrianti, visited her father's house. However, she was surprised to find the door locked, and her father was not home, even though his car was parked in the yard. Novrianti tried calling her father several times, but his phone was off. Feeling suspicious, she finally called another number belonging to her father, and a man named Dayton, Bu Lodoy's employee and trusted person at Pahandut Inda Market, answered. Novrianti was shocked and asked why her father's phone was with Dayton. Dayton explained that Bu Lodoy had entrusted the phone to him to replace the dead battery. When Novrianti asked where her father was, Dayton replied that Bu Lodoy had gone to a relative's funeral. This answer left Novrianti confused, as there was no news in the family WhatsApp group about a family member passing away. Growing more curious, Novrianti continued to ask questions. However, Dayton could only respond that Bu had not mentioned the location of the funeral but promised to return that day with a nephew. After failing to find her father, Novrianti contacted other siblings and her father's friends, but none of them knew his whereabouts. The next day, on Friday afternoon, June 9, 2023, Novrianti returned to her father's house, but he still had not come home. Feeling increasingly worried, she called Dayton again and asked if her father had returned, but Dayton said he had no news. If my father comes home or contacts you, please let me know, Novrianti asked Dayton. Every time she tried calling her father's phone, the result was the same, the phone was off. On Saturday, June 10, Novrianti received a call from her sister, Yulita, who asked about their father's health. Novrianti explained that as far as she knew, their father was fine, but they had been unable to reach him for two days, and the house remained locked. After discussing the matter, they agreed to report Lodoy Tamus's disappearance to the Palankarea Police Department. On Sunday, June 11, Lodoy Tamus's family decided to forcibly open the back door of the house. However, instead of finding anything suspicious, they discovered that the house was in normal condition. There were no signs of anything unusual. The whereabouts of Lodoy Tamus remained a puzzling mystery. The following day, on Monday morning, June 12, 2023, the residents of Keu Bulan village, Kapuaz Regency, were shocked by a horrifying discovery, a body face down in the Luing River. The police quickly arrived at the scene and found the body of a man lying face down in shallow water, with a mask on his face, and his hands and feet bound. The body was immediately evacuated to Doris Silvanus Hospital, Palankarea. To identify the victim, the police checked the list of missing persons and found that Lodoy Tamus's family had reported him as missing. The terrifying truth slowly began to unfold. The police immediately contacted Lodoy Tamus's family after the discovery of a male body in Keu Bulan village, Kapuaz Regency. They informed the family of the possibility that the body could be Lodoy Tamus. To confirm this, the police sent photos and videos of the body to the family via phone. However, for further certainty, the family was asked to come directly to Doris Silvanus Hospital, Palankarea, to perform the identification. Upon seeing the body at the hospital, the family confirmed that it was indeed Lodoy Tamus, who had been missing for four days. The news devastated his family, relatives, and friends. No one could have imagined that a 74-year-old man would meet such a tragic fate. Who could have been cruel enough to take the life of an elderly man? On June 14, two days after the body was found, Lodoy Tamus was laid to rest beside his wife at the Silic Rywat Public Cemetery in Palankarea. The funeral ceremony was filled with the sobs of his children and relatives. Yuli Anson, Lodoy's eldest son, expressed his deep sorrow over his father's tragic death. We are deeply saddened. Our father died in a cruel and unnatural way, he said. Yuli Anson also pleaded with the police to quickly uncover the mystery behind his father's suspicious death. Based on the condition of the body when it was found, there were signs of violence. The family suspected that Lodoy was a victim of robbery and murder, as he often wore gold jewelry in his daily life and managed the Pahandut into market with his trusted colleague Dayton. We hope the police can find the perpetrators soon and deliver appropriate punishment, Yuliansen emphasized, as the family sought justice for their father. The police launched an investigation, questioning several witnesses and related individuals. The case became a major mystery in Palankarea, with the entire community hoping for justice to be served. One week after the discovery of the body, on June 19, 2023, the police successfully arrested the perpetrators in different locations around Palankarea. They were Fofo and Aho, 
who later confessed to being the masterminds behind the brutal murder of Bu Lodo. According to their confession, they were driven by deep jealousy and resentment, which ultimately led them to commit this tragic act. Will this motive hold up in court? During the trial at the Kapuas District Court, the three defendants revealed the sequence of events. Fofo and Aho were employed at Burrito Inda Cafe, owned by the victim, Bu Lodo, while Rama was a close friend of theirs. In front of the judge, Fofo explained that he felt jealous and resentful toward the victim, which became the main trigger for the murder. Fofo claimed that he was jealous because he believed Bu Lodo was too close to his girlfriend, even once hugging her. In addition, Fofo harbored resentment because Bu Lodo had scolded him in front of cafe customers. This combination of jealousy and humiliation led Fofo to make a drastic decision, to kill Bu Lodo. However, he was too afraid to do it alone. On June 3, five days before the murder, Fofo attempted to persuade Aho and Rama to help him kill Bu Lodo, but they initially refused. Not giving up, two days later on June 5, Fofo approached them again, this time with a more enticing offer. He promised that after Bu Lodo was dead, Aho and Rama could take the victim's valuable belongings. This tempting offer succeeded, and Aho and Rama finally agreed to participate in the heinous act. The motive behind the murder began to unfold in court, painting a clearer picture of how personal grudges and greed can drive people to commit horrifying deeds. On the planned day, Thursday morning, June 8, 2023, following Fofo's instructions, Aho rented an Avanza car for two days. Afterward, Aho picked up Fofo and Rama, and they quickly devised their strategy. Fofo acted as the driver, while Aho and Rama were chosen as the executioners. They had already prepared the murder weapons, rope and a hammer. Around early morning, they set out for Bu Lodo's house in the Pahandut area. Fofo had previously deceived Bu Lodo with a fake invitation to attend his relative's wedding in Timpa. However, the wedding was just a ruse to get the elderly man to accompany them. Fofo even arranged the seating positions carefully. Aho was placed in the seat behind the driver, while Rama sat in the backmost seat. During the trip, Bu Lodo called Fofo to ask if they were really going to Timpa. Calmly Fofo replied, Yes, we're on our way to the house, Bu. When they arrived at the house, Bu Lodo, who had been waiting, got into the car right away. He sat next to Aho, while Rama quietly took the seat behind Bu Lodo. Everything seemed normal, and they even stopped to buy a few bottles of wine, without the victim realizing the tragedy that awaited him. During the journey, the atmosphere appeared calm. They chatted casually as Bu Lodo sipped his wine. At one point, Fofo noticed Bu Lodo wearing gold jewelry and commented, I'd like to wear that necklace too. Kindly, Bu Lodo handed over a necklace and said, if you want to wear it, just borrow it. Fofo calmly put the necklace on. Meanwhile, the car kept moving, and after drinking his wine, Bu Lodo fell fast asleep. However, behind that calm, a dark plan has been hatched. Arriving at the Simpang Timpa area, Pujan, heading towards Buntok, Fofo, Aho and Rama began to prepare their action. Rama, who was sitting behind Bu Lodo, suddenly wrapped a rope around the victim's neck and tied it tightly. Bu Lodo, who was sleeping, suddenly woke up, gasped and choked, trying hard to breathe. Seeing the opportunity, Aho, who was sitting next to Bu Lodo, immediately smashed the hammer five times into his grandfather's chest. A groan of pain was heard from Bu Lodo before his body finally fell limp, no longer moving. To make sure the victim was truly lifeless, Aho put his ear to Bu Lodo's chest, hearing the silence that indicated their first mission had been successful. However, after Bu Lodo died, confusion began to overwhelm them. Night was approaching, and they didn't know where to throw their grandfather's body. The car they drove circled several times in the Timpa and Pujan areas, Kapua's Regency, looking for the right location to eliminate traces of their crimes. When they found the quiet flow of the Luing River in Keu Bulan village, Fofo decided to stop the car. Before taking the final action, they first looted all of Bu Lodo's valuables, including cash and gold jewelry. After that, calmly but cruelly, they tied the grandfather's hands and feet using rope, then threw his body into a culvert connected to the Luing River. Their evil mission ended, and they returned home without regrets. That was roughly the testimony of the defendants during the trial, which provided a chronological account of their crime. Several witnesses were also presented, including Novrianti and Yulita, two of Bu Lodo's children. According to them, one week before the tragic incident, Bu Lodo had mentioned that he had established the burrito in the cafe and had entrusted its management to Fofo and Yulia Pitaloka, who was a relative of his late wife. They are managing the cafe. Please don't be upset, Bu Lodo told his two daughters. Bu Lodo also expressed his wish for his children to maintain a good relationship with the cafe workers. On June 4, he invited Novrianti and Yulita to meet with Fofo, Aho, and Yulia. At that meeting, Yulita gave them some advice. Father has entrusted this business to you. 
please manage the cafe well and take care of him as you would your own father. Little did they know that just a few days later, this advice would not only be ignored but also become part of the tragedy that shook their lives. During the trial, Novrianti revealed that the last time she saw her father was on Wednesday, June 7, 2023, when she brought him food. At that time, she noticed her father wearing a gold necklace, even though Bu Lodo didn't always wear jewelry every day. The next day when she returned to visit, she was surprised to find her father's house locked, and from that moment, he never returned. Aside from his phone, other valuables belonging to her father had also disappeared, including a 100-gram gold necklace, a 10-gram gold pendant, a 10-gram gold ring, and an agate stone ring. Novrianti explained that she and her siblings occasionally borrowed jewelry from their father and always returned it. They also knew where he kept the jewelry, but now the items were gone, and they had no idea who had taken them. In addition to the jewelry, Novrianti questioned the disappearance of 250 million Indonesian rupiah in cash that her father had kept at home. She mentioned that during her last meeting with her father, he had shown her the money. According to her, Fofo was the person who was with Bu Lodo at that time. However, during the trial, Fofo denied the accusations, claiming that there was no special relationship between him and Bu Lodo, and that there was no plan for a marriage. Regarding the 250 million Indonesian rupiah in cash, Fofo claimed he knew nothing about it. He insisted that the motive for the murder was purely out of jealousy, as he believed Bu Lodo was too close to his girlfriend. In addition, Fofo harbored resentment because Bu Lodo had once scolded him in front of cafe customers. However, Novrianti doubted this explanation. She questioned why, if the murder was merely due to jealousy and hurt feelings, Fofo and his accomplices looted all of her father's valuable possessions after killing him. This question lingered, casting doubt that the motive might be deeper and darker than just jealousy and personal grudges. Emotionally, Novrianti stated that the condition of her father's body was horrifying. This cruel act, your honor, was very brutal. They killed my father in an inhumane way, she said, her voice full of sorrow. She couldn't fathom how her father, who had provided job opportunities and capital for the cafe, was treated so cruelly by the perpetrators. One day before Bu Lodo was laid to rest, Fofo and his girlfriend visited the house to pay their respects. At the time, Novrianti observed that Fofo's behavior appeared normal, without any suspicious signs. However, she could not clearly see Fofo and his girlfriend's expressions as both wore masks, which only deepened her suspicions. During the trial, Chief Judge Saptono tried to offer a path to reconciliation between the three defendants and Bu Lodo's family. As Easterners and people of faith, we must strive to ensure that this case does not continue to affect our futures. There is no use in holding on to resentment, said Judge Saptono, while emphasizing that the legal process would still proceed, even if both parties forgave each other. The judge then posed a suggestion, what if the defendants apologize? Yal Bu Lodo's son responded, if they apologize, your honor, it must be sincere. We don't want them to just apologize without any remorse. If they want to confess, then they should reveal everything. Yal added, there are still many things that seem to be hidden in this case. We hope everything will be handed over to the court to be judged fairly, so we can be assured that our father receives the justice he deserves. The atmosphere in the courtroom was tense, with hopes for justice hanging in the air, marking a long journey toward uncovering the truth. The judge then asked Novrianti, Bu Lodo's other child, for her opinion. What do you think? He asked seriously. We don't feel threatened by the perpetrators, Novrianti replied, but we are still worried and want justice to be served. The chief judge then called Fofo to step forward. With deep regret, Fofo knelt in the courtroom before Novrianti and Yulita, who appeared frozen and in tears. I offer my apologies, he said softly, I admit my guilt and on behalf of my extended family, I apologize for my actions that have harmed the victim's family and taken the life of Mr. Lodo. Hearing this statement, Novrianti could not hold back her emotions. How could you do this to my father? She shouted, her voice filled with anger and sadness. The judge immediately asked Novrianti to be patient and not to be carried away by her emotions. However, Novrianti replied firmly, it turns out I cannot forgive the actions of the perpetrators. Yulita also expressed her frustration, emphasizing how cruel the actions against their father were. After a long and exhausting series of trials, the panel of judges at the Kuala Kapuas District Court finally declared that Fofo, Aho, and Rama were found guilty of premeditated murder. This decision marked the first step toward justice for the family of Bu Lodo, even though the pain of loss still lingered in their hearts. After a lengthy trial process, the three perpetrators were each sentenced to 18 years in prison. In its ruling, the judge stated that Herlina Ali Bin Ar was found guilty of committing premeditated murder, as stipulated by law. The three perpetrators, dubbed transgender women, were also known as the Lesbian Trio by the people of Central Kalimantan. They are Herlina alias Fofo, 
Triwadi Lestari alias Aho, and Mustika Rahayu alias Rama, who always appeared in a tomboy style. Herlina was known to have a female partner, although her partner's identity was not disclosed. In her confession, Herlina revealed that it was her lesbian girlfriend who was close to Bulodo, which caused feelings of jealousy to arise in her heart. Whether true or not, Herlina alias Fofo's motive for the murder seemed to be related to jealousy and deep emotional pain. From the crime, the perpetrators managed to seize the property of Bu Lodo. They took cash amounting to IDR 2.8 million and gold jewelry in the form of necklaces and rings. The cash was used to pay for car rentals and gasoline, while the jewelry was sold through Facebook for a total price of IDR 45 million. From the sale, each of them received a share, and the money was used to collectively purchase iPhone Pro Max devices. Thus concludes this brief account of this shocking case. See you next time with a more interesting story.